Hello, everybody. I hope that you are doing well. The speaker expected for today is not available, so Naima accepted to give uh, a lecture in the topic of her uh, PhD thesis. Uh, Naima obtained her master's degree in industrial computing and automation in 2016 from the National Institute of Applied Science and Technology in Tunisia. <coughs> She is currently preparing her PhD thesis jointly at the National Engineering School of uh, Tunis and uh, here at CNAM in Paris. Her research interests include the fault detection and diagnosis for time delay systems. Today, she gives a talk about interval estimation for linear discrete time delay systems. So, uh, Naima, if if you are ready, you can start. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ricey, for this introduction. Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure for me to participate to the international online seminar on interval methods in control engineering. So today, my talk is about interval estimation for linear discrete time delay system. During the last decades, the study of time delay systems has tracked great attention. It is motivated by the operation of delay phenomenon in various engineering applications, such as robotics, chemical and biological systems, medicines, as well as processes. Moreover, processing time and propagations in actuators and sensors generally induce such delays. So the emergence of uh, time, delay system, time delay in dynamical systems uh, was diagnosed as one of the major sources of oscillations, loss of stability, and degradation of performance. To better understand this phenomenon, let us consider the following example, where H is the time delay. It can be seen that the system is stable in the, in the delay-free case. However, for some value of time delay, for example, H equal 1, the system becomes unstable for another value of delay. So the stability analysis and robust control of time delay systems are therefore of theoretical and practical importance. On the other hand, time delay systems are also known as differential difference equations. For example, let us consider the following system where h is the time delay and x is state vector. The calculation of the state evolution of such systems requires the usage of xt when t belongs to the interval minus h0. So the initial function, the initial condition is the function, and the system is therefore the infinite dimensional system since it belongs to the class of functional differential equations. In the context of state estimation, Various methods have been proposed to design state observers of time delay systems during the last decades. Some authors worked on the extension of longer type observers for linear time delay systems. Other researchers have designed... Um, Naima, may I briefly interrupt you? Uh, we can still only see the title uh, page of your presentation. Ah, the first page? Maybe just stop sharing the screen and ah, uh, now it's working. Should I repeat or uh, continue? Uh, let's continue with the slide where you have the equation. This one now? This one? Yep. Okay. In the context of state estimation, various have been proposed to design uh, state observers of time delay systems during decades. Some others worked on the extension of lambda grid type observers uh, for linear time delay systems. Other researchers have designed and known input observers uh, for linear and nonlinear time delay systems to solve the, the problem of state estimation in the presence of a known input. In addition, 
research has been conducted in the field of H-infinity optimal observation and filtering for time delay systems. In fact, various methods have been proposed to design H-infinity observers uh, for time delay systems. And some other methods were developed to design sliding mode observer for linear and nonlinear time delay systems. All of these results are focused on point estimation, which cannot converge to the exact value of the state vector in the case where, the, where a known uncertainty exists in system dynamics. In opposite of uh, in opposite to status interval estimation, interval estimation uh, provides alternatives as it can handle system with uh, uncertainties, uh, provided that bounds of uh, the uncertainties are known. Interval estimation approach can provide two estimates, lower and upper one, uh, which can bound the measured state, vari state variables. Thus, for this approach, even though asymptotic estimation of the unknown state vector is not possible, but at any instant of time, we can compute the lower and the upper bounds, including of the feasible, feasible states in the way. In the literature, two basic categories of interval estimation methods can be distinguished. The first is known as observer design, which is based on the monotone system theory. The second uh, is based on set membership uh, approach and aims to construct compact sets, including all the possible state value by using predefined geometrical sets as isoids, zonotopes, polytopes, and parallelotopes. Throughout this talk, we are, li we are only uh, interested in interval observer design and zonotope ba uh, based interval estimation. Let's Observers. The basic idea is to design two point observer, two point observers to provide the upper and lower bound of the real states, such that their uh, estimation error dynamics are both cooperative and stable. However, it is not trivial to concept a cooperative and stable error system, even impossible for some for some dynamical systems. This constraint can be relaxed via coordinate transformation, which can lead some conservatism and less accurate estimation results because the interval will be enlarged during the process of inverse of coordinate transformation matrix. Meanwhile, the zone of base interval estimation method uh, can achieve a good trade-off between estimation accuracy and computational complexity. Uh, compared to interval observer theory, this method is intuitive and independent of cooperativity constraint and coordinate transformation. Now, let's introduce what is a zonotope. An, an S-order zonotope is the often image of an Iber cube in n-dimensional space, and it is defined by its center P and its generation matrix H. So in order to better understand this definition, we introduce three examples of zonotopes. The first example is two order zonotopes in two dimensional space. The second example is a three order zonotope in two dimensional space. However, the third example corresponds to two order zonotopes in three dimensional space. Moreover, some properties are uh, essential in this talk. The Minkowski sum of two zonotopes is zonotope obtained by concatenation of matrices. The linear transformation of a given zonotope is also a zonotope obtained by product of matrices. And the high dimensional zonotope can be bounded by a lower one via a reduction operator, which can avoid the growth of computational burdens uh, during the set propagations. So, Interval state estimation is recognized as an interesting way to couple the state estimation problems with the presence of bounded uncertainties. During the last decades, interval state estimation methods have been widely investigated and applied to several applications such as the biological systems, bioreactors, nonlinear systems control, LPV systems, structured and descriptive systems, and cell diagnosis. To the best knowledge, 
little attention has been paid to the interval estimation for time delay systems. In the literature, few researchers worked on the design of interval observers for descriptive linear and nonlinear systems. Other authors uh, uh, are propose, uh, propose uh, reduce order interval observer for linear and nonlinear systems. Okay? And some other method was proposed to design interval observers for, ta to, for time invariant exponentially stable linear systems. All the existing has been only developed for continuous time delay systems, and the zone of interval estimation for such systems has not fully considered. So the main contribution of this work is to develop interval observer design and zone of based methods for linear discrete time delay system with constant time delay subject to unknown disturbances and measurement noises. After this introduction, I give you the outline of this talk. First, I will introduce server design for linear discrete time delay systems. Then, the zonotope based method for such systems is then exposed in the country. And I finish, uh, finish my presentation by two numerical examples and some conclusions emphasizing the main contribution of this work. Let's start with the first method interval observer design for linear discrete time delay system. We consider the following linear uh, system with x, u, and y are respectively the state vector, the input, and the output vectors. H is the time delay. W and v key are the disturbance and measurement noises. Uh, and phi, phi is the initial function vector. These assumptions are required for the design of interval observer. So the zero-c is observable, and the initial state vector is assumed to be bounded by two known bounds, lower x and upper x, and the state disturbance and the measurement noise are known but bounded with lower and upper bounds, and v is a positive scalar. So, our uh, the aim is to develop an interval observer which consists of two dynamical systems to estimate respectively the upper and lower bounds of the state. Then the state estimation of linear discrete time delay system is achieved by the following interval observer, uh, where lower and upper x is the upper and lower and upper bounds of the estimate, and x0 and 1 are the observer gain matrices to be computed. So the problem of interval observer design consists in finding two gain matrices, L0 and L1, to ensure two essential conditions. The first condition is relative to competitivity property, that means that X between two bounds, and the stability of lower and upper estimation error. We begin by uh, the competitivity property. Here we have a definition of uh, cooperative time delay systems. If we have two matrix A0, A1, which are non-negative, and W is positive, and the initial function vector is positive, then such system is called cooperative. So according to this definition, the purpose is to prove the cooperativity of aerodynamics. And we have the uncertainties abundant, so the, these terms are positive and uh, the initial condition of error are positive since the state value is uh, between two bounds. And if we have the observation matrices, then B system is Also, this to satisfy the stability of the proposed interval observer, the following lyapunov kozovsky is introduced to achieve the stability analysis. And furthermore, the, the H infinity formalism is introduced into observer design to reduce the effects of disturbances and noises. These results are summarized in the following LMI, where gamma is a positive scalar, P is 
matrix and to Q is a symmetric matrix. And the observer gains L0, L1 are obtained by the following equations. Now we are going to present the zonal top interval estimation for linear discrete time delay systems. We still consider the same linear discrete time delay systems, but now this, the initial state vector and the disturbance and the measurement noise are assumed to be bounded by zonotopes, where P key, H key, HW, and HV are known vector and matrices. Our goal is to estimate the interval vector that contains the real state vector as accurate as possible. For this purpose, we propose a zonotope based method which can be divided into three steps. First, a pointwise observer is designed via the H infinity formalism. Then, the zonotope sets will be introduced to represent and uh, propagate reachable sets. And finally, the interval estimation will be achieved based on outer box approximation. Okay, now I start by the first step. Uh, we consider the following uh, H infinity observer uh, based on the type structure where L0 and L1 are the observer gain to be determined. Uh, by defining the error dynamics, like the difference between the real state and, the estim and its estimates, uh, the estimation error convergence is ensured using the following Lyapunov-Kaminsky functional and the H infinity. Formalism is introduced to tune the observing gains uh, in order to obtain more accurate interval state estimation, ensuring uncertainties attenuation. So, uh, in order to above, uh, to in order to satisfy the above conditions, the following LMI uh, holds where well, gamma is positive scalar, P and Q are two symmetric positive finite matrices, and the observing gains are obtained by the following relations. Now, after designing the H infinity observer, we use the zonotopes to estimate the reachable size of a state, including all the admissible value of the state. Now that the initial error, the disturbance, and the measurement of uh, noise is zonotopes, the reachable set of errors at the instant key plus can be estimated based on set propagation equations. After that, the set of state vector at uh, instant key plus one can be estimated uh, since we uh, provided the matrix H hat key plus one. So the question is how can we obtain this matrix? Based on the properties of Minkowski sum and linear transformation of zonotopes, we can easily determine the expression of the nature matrix at uh, instant key plus one based on the set propagation equation. However, we can remark that the column of a this matrix can, uh, will increase linearly, which may cause the cost of dimension. So in order to avoid the growth of the computational complexity due to the increasing number of columns on this matrix, uh, it is common to use the vector of the operator Therefore, the matrix each hat key is replaced by Q each hat key, where Q is the maximum number of columns of uh, this matrix after reduction. Then, this, the zonotope uh, reachable set of the error step by step can be easily determined as using x key equal x hat key plus e key, the estimated set of the state can be deduced. After estimating the zonotopes reachable size of the state, the smallest outer box is used to calculate the tightest upper and lower bounds of X key as follows. Now, we will present two numerical examples to illustrate the feasibility and the effectiveness of the proposed methods. Let's begin with the first, with the case of cooperative error system. We consider a linear discrete time delay systems with the following 
the, the input control is chosen as a step with the amplitude is 0 0.1. The uh, disturbance and the measurement noise are bounded by isomatops. And the initial state vector is also bounded by isomatops where each key is given as follows. In this the cooperativity condition is satisfied and the interval observer is designed there with the with, with L0, L1 are given by the following matrices and the minimum H infinity index. Moreover, the zone of base solution can be achieved with the following conserving gains and gamma equals 9.94. In order to, uh, to illustrate the efficiency of the zonotope based method, we have made a comparison with the interval observer's design method. The simulation results are presented in the following figures, where the red and blue dotted lines correspond to the upper and lower bounds obtained by the zonotope, and the red and green dotted lines correspond to the upper and lower bound obtained by the interval observer. These figures show that the zonotope based method gives more accurate interval estimation results than the interval observer. In order to better illustrate the effectiveness of the zonotope based method, the second numerical example is used with the following with the following parameters. In this case, the interval observer cannot be designed since the uh, covertivity constraint isn't verified. However, independent of this constraint, uh, an interval estimation based on zonotopes can be implemented by, by obtaining gamma equal 194 and uh, the gain matrices L0, L1 are given as follows. These figures present the simulation results where the state coordinates are shown with the corresponding bounding variables from the zonotope based interval estimation. Compared with the interval observer design, the zonotope based method is independent of cooperativity constraint and gives more accurate estimation results. To conclude, in this talk, we propose an interval observer design and zonotope based interval estimation methods for linear discrete time systems with time delay affected by bounded disturbances and measurement noises. First, an interval observer is designed based on cooperativity conditions of estimation and dynamics, and then the zonotope based interval estimation method is proposed by integrating a robust observer design based on H affinity formalism and uh, zonotopic analysis to achieve the interval estimation. Compared with interval observers, the proposed method gave less conservative estimation results and it is independent of cooperativity constraint and coordinate transformation. However, the interval observer has also an important uh, advantage over the zonotope based method that it has less computational complexity than the zonotope based method based on set operation. In future works, the proposed method will be extended to delay dependent stability approach and robust time delay systems with time varying delay will be investigated. I thank you for your attention and I am glad to answer for your questions. So thank you, Naima, for this uh, presentation. First, you apologize for the poor quality of the connection and for the, the bad sound. We have time for questions. Who would like to start? Okay, Tarek, then let me start uh, with uh, some questions. Okay. First of all, Naima, many thanks for your talk. And uh, I would like to start with the, uh, a question concerning your example on the slide 37. 37. Okay. Yes. Uh, there you mentioned a specific value of gamma this value gamma 1.94 or something. Mm -hmm. um, is this systematically optimized during solving these LMI conditions or was this more or less a trial and error approach that you tried to figure out some value of gamma where the LMIs were satisfied? And the minimum value of gamma? Yes, is it systematically minimized? Systematically minimized? 
Yes, uh, during solving the LMIs, uh, did you use gamma as the corresponding optimality criterion? Or did you just play around with gamma and try uh, to no, figure no, out if uh, the LMIs have a solution? Gamma is obtained uh, by the uh, new system systematically with the new, when you solve the LMI, gamma is uh, an, an, a variable that uh, can be op op optimized in the uh, in the solve. when okay. you solve the LMI, so gamma is is calcul calculated. Not bad, meaning okay, uh, that means you included uh, it directly as a decision variable in the yes, process. Yes, yes, yes. Um, my question comes from that point of view because your examples, let's say there's some kind of toy examples, they only have two state variables. Mm -hmm. And usually, uh, at least uh, with the applications that I try to solve uh, for age infinity observer design, when you have significantly more state variables, let's say 30 states, 50 states, 100 states, usually it's quite difficult to optimize gamma in a systematic way when this is a decision variable. Did you exhibit such a phenomena in your applications or was it just due to the small dimensions that uh, including gamma as a decision variable was straightforward and worked right, right away? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for this remark. Well, I, be, I begin with a simple case, two dimension, and I will uh, introduce any uh, more complex examples for the uh, in future works, maybe. Yes, be, be, because my suggestion for higher dimensional system models would be, first of all, start with something that is stabilizing the error dynamics mm -hmm. uh, without including gamma as a decision variable. Compute the resulting value of gamma, by solving the yes, uh, definition equation for gamma, and then make something like a line search procedure in order to reduce gamma. Be because I think uh, usually for very high dimensional system models, directly optimizing, at least with the solvers that I tried, this was Morsek and Sidumi that I used, it was very hard to find solutions. Yes, it is a challenging problem. Okay, many thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Other questions? Who has some questions? So I have a small question. Uh, have you any idea on how to extend this result to linear parameter varying systems? Linear parameter varying LPG systems? Yes. With time delay? With time delay, of course, yes. Mm. I think we can extend it for this, this class. What is the main concern to consider uh, linear parameter varying systems? or at least uh, uncertain systems with parameter uncertainties. Mm -hmm. I don't think this this can be extended to the class of APV system with uh, parametric uncertainties. Uh, maybe in future worlds I will try to, I will, I will, I will work on this extension, maybe. Uh, hello? Yes. I have a question. Uh, you mentioned that for LTI systems there are there is a cooperative change of coordinates that you can do in order to alleviate this requirement on the cooperativity for the aerodynamics. Since you have two different gains for you to select here, so L0 and L1, did you see if it's possible to find a cooperative change of coordinates for the system? Mm, no, but uh, if the cooperative constraint cannot be satisfied, uh, we can uh, use the coordinate transformation. But in this work, uh, this uh, coordinate transformation is not uh, introduced, but we can we can apply it to satisfy the cooperativity, con cooperativity condition. Because uh, in, in general case, uh, this cooperativity is, is hard to fulfill and it is uh, to be satisfied. Yes, because when you have only one gain, it's a well-known result from Thais. Well, it's from simple, but when you have, have other, more gains, 
the, it, it can be more difficult. Okay, so it doesn't exist up to now. Okay. Um, maybe that it's, uh, quite restrictive. Uh, we can find a solution for some spe uh, special cases, such as, uh, for example, commutative matrices. If um, the matrices uh, A1 are, and A2 uh, commute, uh, I think that uh, it's possible to find a solution. Otherwise, it's uh, complicated, I think, to find the same change of coordinates to make these uh, matrices uh, cooperative or non-negative, I think. It's maybe a question oh. to all three of you, to Tarek, Alex, and Naima. Uh, okay. co co concerning the question that Alex just raised, uh, would it be reasonable to include the delayed state variables in some kind of augmented state? Let's say you have the current state xk and xk minus h in some augmented state vector and then try to perform the change of coordinates for this augmented system? Okay, it's obvious that uh, the task becomes computationally more expensive, but maybe this reduces a little bit the conservativeness of uh, the design constraints. Yeah, I think so. Even I think that the, it's possible for, um, for example, if the delay is known I think that it's uh, clearly possible to use an augmented uh, state. Mm -hmm. state. Uh, if in the case of uh, time varying delays, I don't know if. Uh, yes, for, if for, for known delays, I think it's just something like in the continuous time framework, you would say it's a method of steps. Mm. Uh, it's with uncertain delay, I'm not sure what to do. Yeah. In a certain case delay, I think it is more complicated because uh, in the uh, observer structure, uh, the knowledge of the time delay is not is not uh, provided, no, no, not you know, available. So le, le, after in the stability uh, analysis and uh, H infinity and etc., can be little. Complicated since the delay is not uh, is not any uh, known. Even on competitive constraint, competitive constraint, and the uh, transformation coordinate coordinates uh, will be uh, more complicated. I think so. Have you some other questions, please? Yeah. Yes, because I just see the example slide. Uh, in your example, you assumed that the input was a point val uh, value. This u was just a point value 0 0.1, I think. Um, is there any reason except for purpose of visualization or does the design of the observer become much more complicated if you have something like an unknown input, let's say an interval input, which may change from time step to time step? Sorry? Um, when, when you go back one slide, you have uh, the system input u equal to 0 0.1 as a constant. Here? Yes. uk is equal to 0 0.1 as a constant for all points of time. Uh, if we assume that u belongs to an interval, Mm -hmm. and that it may change arbitrarily from time step to time step within the interval bounds. Mm -hmm. Would your observer work like you presented it? Or does, is there something that turns either the implementation or the design much more complicated? <laughs> is it possible to consider, for example, uh, in known input, uh, in known inputs, uh, for example. Yes, with, without estimating the input. Yes. I think that the answer is uh, yes, it's uh, quite similar to this uh, approach. Yes. I assume it is just blowing up the corresponding uh, domains a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, what, what is more difficult, I think, is something like an unknown input observer to reconstruct you from the measure data. I think this could be more challenging. For this class of assistance, uh, it's also possible to reconstruct the unknown inputs. It's not quite complicated for this case, mm. for constant uh, delays. We can use also the uh, descriptor augmentation approach to uh, to uh, uh, for the case of a known input observer. Uh, you need to overcome the uh, the difficulty of the unknown input. I think it is easy and not complicated. Who has a question, please? Have you some questions? Maybe a standard question for the outlook on future work. What would be happening if your system gets nonlinear? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it would be a nice bullet point here, third bullet point on the slide. Because I assume that one thing you could do is, uh, as Tarek suggested, uh, to consider the nonlinearity as some kind of varying parameter to map mm -hmm. it onto the system matrices. That's mm -hmm. one thing. And maybe another thing would be to try to find um, yes, corresponding uh, interfaces to the presentations that we had recently by Thomas and Bernd uh, concerning the nonlinear observer design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Andreas, I think that there is. Yes, I'm browsing again through the list of participants, but no one has raised his hand. Yes. Okay. Is there really no one who wants to ask any further question? So if not, Naima, thanks again for your very nice presentation okay. and for answering all the questions. I think it was a very nice topic and it fit perfectly in the frame of our seminar. Yes. It is often uh, a problem also. I think it is often a problem of uh, uh, many uh, extensions could be uh, investigated in future works, nonlinear systems, input and non observer, uh, a certain case of time delay, yep. many, uh, many directions. Okay, if there's still no one who wants to ask any further question, thanks again for your contribution. Thanks to the audience for listening. And yes, the only thing is that is left to say for me is have a nice weekend, or nice Friday afternoon, have a nice weekend, and see you again in two weeks in our seminar.